mentioned, Dr. Lonke, the correlation between lead presence in bone and tissues and violent crime, or at least incarceration for crimes. This brings me to the psychological and behavioral component of these, of exposure to these heavy metals. This is what interests me in particular. Well, it's, Do, a, very, it's, a, big, it's a big factor. Lead and mercury are the two, you know, the, the hatters. You ever hear of the mad hatter? You sure. Know, I'm sure your listeners are aware of the fact that's because they lined felt hats with mercury in the old days, and, and the hatters used to lick their brushes. Yeah. That was mad as a hatter. And yeah, yeah, it, it'll drive you insane. But this is my question. Do you think that at least some portion of the insanity that we see across modern culture today is caused by this exposure to, to heavy metals. Undoubtedly. I, I, there, is, there is not one ounce of scientific doubt in my mind. I think that it is one of the factors. What I want the listeners to understand is it's not the only factor. Sure. There are many factors that go into it. But if you can remove, just think about this, if we can remove this, this veil, take this veil away from all of what's going on in society today, behavioral abnormalities, medical abnormalities, the obesity epidemic, obesity in kids. Now, maybe your listeners will understand if you're born with all of these chemicals that are hormone emulators and stack the deck against you, metabolizing glucose normally, well, why wouldn't these kids get diabetes earlier? Why wouldn't yeah. they have a higher incidence? Well, and why wouldn't our prisons be filled with, with criminals? And doesn't this call into question the entire so-called criminal justice system? If punishing people for their, quote, behavior by throwing them in prison without treating their, some of what might, might be the causes, chemicals or metals poisoning, isn't that a completely incomplete and, in fact, an unjust system of justice? Yes, but I think that the legal system, like the polit political system, are very, very difficult places to crack. I think we have to do this as a grassroots movement of education of young people, all right, Dr. Lunky, we got sure we to gotta go to break. Part. I'm sorry to cut you off. Please stay with us, though. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes with more from Dr. Stuart Lonke here on the Alex Jones Show. Stay with us. We'll be we are right interviewing back. Dr. Stuart Lonke, who is an expert in internal medicine and toxicology, and he was mentioning some of the food sources. Uh, he mentioned a lot of people eating sushi. Now, I don't know about you, Dr. Lonke. I don't eat sushi. I, I only eat fire-bombed turkeys airdropped into vats of boiling oil. That well, that is my diet. Uh, it's DHS compliant. See, I, I, what I think, and I think I'm, I'm making. I should make people uh, uh, be aware of the fact that it, 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 you can't get away from this. You talked about arsenic. <clears throat> you talked about arsenic in water. But how many people out there listening to your show have wood decks? Have wood swing sets? Oh, pressure treated wood. Yeah. All that treated wood is treated with an arsenic containing compound. Now, kids will crawl on it, and you will handle the wood, and then you'll make yourself a sandwich, won't you? Yeah, but, but what... And most of these toxins, I want the listeners to know, yes, for the women, cosmetics is a major source, but by and large, the, 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 by far and away, the largest source mode of exposure to all of these toxins is you eat them. You yeah. eat them. They're in the food, they're on your hands, and uh, they, some of them you inhale, there's no question. Some of them get through your skin, but ingestion, the GI tract, is the major introduction of most of these toxins. Well, let's talk about that. When, when you ingest these toxins, I want to get to what, in your research and your experience, what kinds of effects do you see? Are people hallucinating? Do they hear sounds of chirping birds? Do they think? Do they make bad decisions about uh, elections? I mean, what what is really the impact? <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't touch that one. But I think that uh, you know, I think they're so subtle, Mike. That's the thing that's important for people to understand. Uh, people get stomach aches more frequently. They tend to have uh, more constipation and then some diarrhea. And they, they, they tend to have nausea episodes. Uh, they tend to get muscle aches and pains. They are so nondescript. They are so nonspecific to a specific, to, to a specific exposure. You would think, oh, arsenic exposure. We're talking about arsenic toxicity. That's easy. We're talking about lead toxicity. That's easier. Those people become psychotic. They uh, they become pro they pro become problematic. But irrational behavior, unusual behavior, increased lethargy. All of these people say, well, it's just.
just run down. Well, he's under a lot of stress. Well, he's ingesting arsenic. They don't say that. What, they, what, they what percentage that of the U.S. Congress do you think is suffering from heavy metals toxicity? I, <laughs> I mean, I got to ask. Congress are suffering from a significant amount of toxicity. But, but we all are. And, and the fact is, it's, it's happening imperceptibly to us. It happens generationally. It's easy. Hindsight is really 2020. And that's why when we look at the data, we look at epidemiologic data and we say it's unreasonable that the incidence of autism and behavioral deficit or, or attention deficit, and I call it behavioral deficit because it's more than just attention. Yeah. It's the whole behavior. You see these hyperactive kids, and I watch it all the time. It's very interesting. My daughter, my younger daughter, detoxed for a year before she even got pregnant, all through her pregnancy. And I watch my grandson, who's three, and his behavior contrasted with other three-year-olds. Quick, quick question, because we're almost out of time. Does your book offer people some solutions for detox? It does. It does. And, are and there are a handful and a growing number. And there are some extraordinarily effective ways that we can begin to detox. We need to figure out ways to bring that to people. All right. All right. We've got to go to break. Dr. Lonke, thank you. Thank you so much. We'll be right back in one minute. I'll give you some more solutions on the other side of this break. But in the last segment, we talked to Dr. Lonke, who... who you know, I, I think we could talk to him for hours about the real hardcore information about heavy metals poisoning and the toxicity that is infecting the minds of the American people. And I've got a, a working theory on this, that part of the insanity that has infected America today, the reason why you have presidential debates where people make no sense, why you have leadership at the executive level that is saying we need to spend a few trillion more dollars to get us out of the trillions in debt we're already in. Yeah, that's, that's kind of insane. That's pure clinical insanity, if you think about it. As Gerald Salenti, I'm sure, would have a few comments about the insanity going on at MF Global today. These days, it, it's pretty much insane. But why is it so insane? So I asked Dr. Lonke, do you think members of Congress are suffering from heavy metals toxicity? And he said yes, and he thinks everybody is. But I bet you, if you were to go into Congress and have them subject themselves to blood tests, woo, wouldn't that be interesting? You might find some non-human DNA in the mix there, <laughs> according to David Icke, right? <laughs> but you would definitely find some heavy metals in that mix. Probably a lot of lead, a lot of arsenic, a lot of mercury. Everybody who voted for the Patriot Act is probably suffering from lead poisoning. No, I don't mean from bullets. I know what you're thinking. No, I mean from their food, from the lead in their pipes, from, from that thing, other sources of lead. Or mer mercury poisoning. Because their moms, let's say, that yes, they do have mothers, their moms were eating tuna fish when they were pregnant and the mercury went through the blood and got into the developing minds of the little infant fetuses that were going to be born and someday become senators. So now they're insane, but they're in charge. That's scary. That's kind of disturbing actually. Let's not, uh, let's not let that happen. Let's get healthy, let's detox. And along those lines, just from my own experience, I'm not, I'm, I, oh man, I've got a break coming up very quickly. Avoid exposure to heavy metals. Eat lots of fibrous foods. Apples contain pectin juice. A lot of vegetables, chlorella and cilantro bind to heavy metals and help carry them out of your body. So does grapefruit pectin and other natural fibers. Detox yourself. Get those heavy metals out of your body and out of your brain and you will make better decisions as a result. We'll talk more about that on the other side of this break as we are joined by Robert Scott Bell. Welcome back, patriots and heroes of the free world. We are engaged in our worldwide transmission here on the Alex Jones Show. I'm the fill-in host today, Mike Adams, the health ranger. Yeah, the editor of naturalnews.com and an occasional host here. And we've been having a great time with you today talking about all kinds of heavy metals, poisoning, and ways you can avoid that and get that out of your body because it affects the minds of men and women. And shortly, we're going to be joined by Robert Scott Bell, and we're going to talk about our list of things that you can be thankful for, the things that we're thankful for this Thanksgiving. It is actually a holiday of, of giving thanks. So let's do that. Let's give some gratitude out there where it is due. And we'd like to take your calls during this hour. So 
please call us at 800, what is that, 259-9231, 1-800-259-9231, we'll get you on the board and we'll get your calls in. And just before we get to Robert Scott Bell here, finishing up that last segment, I do believe, I do believe that the insanity that we are witnessing today with the Federal Reserve, with the presidential debates, remember when Rick Perry couldn't remember the third thing, the third Department of Government that he was going to cut? I think that could be a mercury side effect. I mean, he was the one pushing the vaccines, Gardasil. Did he take some Gardasil himself? I don't know, but I bet he took some other vaccines and might be suffering from some metals. Po it's, it, it's metals poisoning himself. It's just, uh, you know, look, I don't have his medical records, so I don't know for sure. But it is a possibility that these people who can't think rationally and can't speak without a teleprompter, that they may be suffering from heavy metals poisoning. I can only imagine a U.S. senator suffering from high levels of lead and cadmium and arsenic and mercury, thinking to, to himself, uh, let's pass a, a Patriot Act version 2 and let's catch criminals by reaching down their pants and then we'll take some time off from the Senate. Uh, Pickler's Fortnite and I'll go take a long walk off a short pier and at my feet I will discover Patriot Act version 3 and we'll enact that. That's the level of insanity that I'm talking about. Just complete... Cats and dogs living together, quote Bill Murray. <laughs> Total insanity out there. But let's move on to something a little more sane and a little more, let's say, humbling this holiday season. Things to be thankful for. And for that segment, we are joined by none other than Robert Scott Bell, who also is a radio host on the Genesis Communications Network. And he just did a fantastic interview with Governor Jesse Ventura that aired a couple of days ago. Robert is joining us by Skype. Robert, are you with us? Are you there? Hello. <laughs> are you on? Okay, Robert, can you hear me? Mike, you there? Yes, I can hear you. Good, good to hear your voice, man. How you doing? I apologize. I'm not hearing any audio. Okay, we'll get that hooked up here. I got you, Mike. Now uh, I can hear you. All right, great. I, I thought maybe a little bit of mercury was affecting me there for a moment, but now I realize I'm totally sane. So go ahead. You're, you're good. I'm definitely not bringing any mercury today. If anything, I'd be bringing some mercury detox with me. Yeah. What do you think, by the way, on that? Before we get into the Thanksgiving list, what you have, you have actually studied a lot of detox. What are the top detoxification techniques in your experience for getting rid of heavy metals? Well, yeah, it's a great topic. Uh, you know, we covered a lot on the show. There's always more questions, 10 more every time you bring up one of the solutions or 10 of them. And, of course, my background in energetic homeopathic medicine after being raised allopathically or pharmaceutically, having to undo so much of the damage of modern medicine, uh, I think one of the, mo the most important things to understand is that there's an energy to every metal. And we've, we've covered this, you and I, too. Uh, and, of course, the metabolism of the body deals, we're dealing with energy. And, of course, identifying these toxic metals is one thing. And, and for many of us who have been exposed, for instance, to mercury through dental fillings or through vaccination or other environmental exposures, there's been so much over time, albeit a small amount over time, that is constantly leaching into the tissue, et cetera, that the body seems to kind of, uh, I would say neutralize it, but it can't react vigorously against it anymore because it's, it's always present and it would exhaust us to death. Yeah, it's like being slowly poisoned by a, a virus or, a, let's say, a bacteria living in your gut that's been genetically modified and it's churning out BT toxin in your own digestive tract. I mean, it's yeah. that bad, right? It, yeah, it really is like, a, think of, you know, walking through life with a big, heavy lead mercury anchor. You know, you wouldn't be moving anywhere very quickly and, and pretty soon you're, you know, you, it'd wear you down, basically. And that's what we're talking about with these heavy metals, among many things that happen. Uh, so I, I obviously go to the ultimate in unconventionality, which would be energy medicine, of course, homeopathy. I know a lot of people that are materialists and reductionists are not uh, in favor of it, although it's completely harmless. Some would say, well, there's nothing there. We can get into discussion of that. But I found it to be most profound in terms of assisting all of the other botanical and chelating agents from nature. So you need some of the, the synthetic nutrients that are used in aggressive urgent care in medicine when they do intravenous chelation. But right. the missing element typically is the homeopathic signatures, whether it be homeopathic mercurius, which is mercury. Uh, we can do it with lead, which is plumbum metallicum. Uh, we can do it with arsenic, with arsenicum album. I mean, we can re literally pick any metal that is toxic and shouldn't be in the body and address it homeopathically in conjunction with 
support for the excretory pathways of the body. All right, so you're not saying if, if, if you're suffering a, a highly toxic level of, of acute lead poisoning, you're not saying just treat it with homeopathy. You're saying, do you know, in the emergency room, they'll do the IV chelation. Right. They will do maybe some other medicines. But then in addition to that, you can do some botanical approaches and you can do homeopathic approaches with, which have zero negative side effects anyway to, to assist in that. Yeah, absolutely. I think you only have a plus factor. I mean, if you if you realize the energy it takes to address and mobilize the defenses to bind and get this stuff out of your system, you'll want every advantage you have. So at the very least, homeopathic adjuncts, and that would also go with remedies that specifically support liver kidney pathways. You may have already discussed this, but I think one of the other things to reduce the burden on the liver and kidneys with these metals is far infrared healing light type technologies. Oh, that, yeah, that's great. It yeah. helps you sweat out toxins. It's really... Yeah, except if you overdo the sweat lodge situation, in which case you pass out and die, as happened. Who was that? Who was the guru guy that had the sweat lodge I, deaths? I don't remember his name, but he just got sentenced to a number of years. Oh, uh, man. And, and that's why we have to be dil diligent uh, uh, and vigilant, if you will, about even the natural realm, that there are people that don't understand you know, necessarily how to do these things safely. I mean, obviously, you go into far infrared heat, you go to excess, literally a body temperature issue could put you in a bad way, just like in a sweat lodge scenario. Yeah, but if you feel yourself passing out, people, you know, don't continue. Uh, get out of the infrared uh, little the, closet there and drink some water. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like the, the, the brilliant people that uh, put frozen turkeys in, in, in peanut fryers. Yeah, hey, what'd you think about that? Did you like the little firebombing demo that we've been warned about? Well, you know, it's sort of, it's sort of cheating ahead because that was one of the things I was going to tell you I was grateful for, that the TSA, <laughs> the Turkey Security Administration, <laughs> and uh, the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security Turkeys, basically, uh, have warned us and, and, and saved us. I mean, how many millions of Americans are now safe because of their warning? I think it's the Department of Home Cooking Security now. Exactly. Uh, you know, we're talking about Taliban Turkey terrorism now. What, about, what do you think about vitamin C, see something, say something? That's, <laughs> that's our favorite nutrient now here at, at the InfoWars team. If you happen to see any vitamin C anywhere, you must say something. You must turn that in. <laughs> it's a controlled substance more dangerous than anything. Well, actually, no, Big Pharma is the real danger. And by the way, uh, you know, I covered on the, on the show uh, just prior to coming on board here uh, today, uh, of course, you, you did as well, I'm sure, uh, the Ron Paul uh, uh, debate, so to speak. I mean, it was him and everybody else and sensational things when he acknowledged the failure of the war on drugs. And he acknowledged the loan among that crew as the doctor as well. Uh, the danger of the FDA prescription drugs being he did. Fought. Yeah, yeah. He said more people are being killed by prescription drugs than in the, in was it was he comparing it to the drug war deaths or terrorism deaths? I don't recall. Uh, well, to the yeah, drug war to the illicit drugs as such, and you know we we're, we're not endorsing the use of synthetic uh, street drugs either. Uh, but the no. point is the you know the the botanicals of creation are certainly not what we need to be concerned with. We need to be concerned about the growth of government, which is, you know, an artificial creation, and our founding fathers certainly warned us against what we're, what we're living through right now. Well, if you think about the big threats that they're trying to scare us about, they're all imaginary. The, the whole war on terror, completely imaginary. Where, where are the terrorists? Where? Yeah. Walk around. Where, I haven't seen any terrorists. Your, your odds of being killed by a terrorist, even if you buy the 9-11 story, your mm. odds of being killed by a terrorist are are far lower, literally tens of thousands of times lower than being killed by an FDA-approved pharmaceutical. So where's oh. the war on pharmaceuticals? Yeah, where is that war on that drugs, you know, which we might say it would be a legitimate one to declare, and we could actually win and get it done with. I would say if we occupy the FDA, my good friend John Rappaport had indicated that that might be the next step here because they're looking at pulling two-thirds or more of the dietary supplements off the market with these new uh, guidelines. I think it'd be great if the people making the laws in Washington would simply occupy their own minds. <laughs> because they're, they're, they're way off world, occupying something way out there. And Robert, we are, we're going to take calls, by the way. We've got a couple people on, not in this segment, but in, in the following segment. But sure. let's get to our list. We've got some things to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. I know you brought five things. Yeah. I brought five things. And then maybe the callers have some things. What, what do you want to start off with? Well, yeah, some are serious, some are funny, obviously. Uh, as I mentioned, the TSA's announcement about the turkey fryers, which I'm so grateful for that. But it is an absurdist uh, notion. When they do that, it wakes more people up. So I am genuinely grateful for their absurdity and stupidity. But, 
you know, I think one of the things we have to, and we'll probably both agree on this, that we're very grateful for and have been for a long time, is, is Congressman and Dr. Ron Paul. As, as a human, just as, much less as a congressman and all the things that he's doing, uh, to wake up the, the sleeping population here in America and perhaps around the world because of the growth of the, of the message via the Internet and through uh, InfoWars, Alex Jones, and the great work he's doing as well. And I'm truly grateful because he's been a catalyst to, to bring awareness in ways uh, very few have been able to get this kind of information out. And although it's taken many decades, uh, the fact is it's having a major impact now. We're seeing him climb to the top of the charts in Iowa. And his tenacity, his continued steadfastness and, and uh, you know, unwillingness to give up or change the message. Well, Robert, you are pirating my list. He was number one on my list of things to be thankful for, too. So I guess I got to come up with more. And your calls are coming up. Richard, Frank, Janice, Judy, and John will get to your calls and more things to be thankful for right here on the Alex Jones Show on this day before Thanksgiving. Stay with us. We'll be right back in a few Welcome minutes. back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm filling in today. Or Alex, I'm Mike Adams, the health ranger, editor of naturalnews.com, and we are on to a list of the top things that we are thankful for on this Thanksgiving. Your calls are coming up, and we've got Robert Scott Bell joining us by Skype, and I am powered by Chocolate Superfood Smoothie. Here it is in a canning jar. That's what I bring here every time. No, this is not a substance-enhanced performance unless you consider cacao. That's cocoa for those of you... Uh, the, it's cacao from South America. That is the only substance that I take before I do my shows here. Just good nutrition, good alkaloids in there. Helps protect brain function and neurological function. And just makes you feel good about being alive. What do you say, Robert? You happy to be alive today? Oh, yeah, I'm grateful. Absolutely. I was buzzing on cacao the other day when I was interviewing uh, the old Governor Jesse Ventura on the air. That was <laughs> a hoot. Yeah, that was a great interview. He really unloaded and, and just did not censor himself at all. He had a story about Fox News and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, he had a blast. He really enjoyed it. I, I think, you know, that leads me to my second level of gratitude. And not that we're going to say one's more than another, but the second one here for me is the new media. And that, is, that includes you, Mike. It includes Alex Jones, Natural News, etc. And all of the people out there that have become the media through social networks, through blog sites, through everything. Because it is really a part of the next revolution, the awakening, if you will, and, and, you know, the things that Jesse Ventura is doing. And he was so giddy because, you know, we actually get to discuss things and not do sound bites, talk, go in depth on issues that, you know, I think there's a hunger for that. That's why the new media is growing. That's why Alex is growing so much, to, you know, despite a bad economy out there. The thing is, the hunger for this information, and, you know, there are a few people out there like yourself and Alex that are providing it, and we're doing our level best to get this information out there. So I'm very grateful that we're all doing this, and that includes all the people that think they're just listeners. They're more than that. They're taking this information. They're doing things with it that are extraordinary. They are, absolutely. The new media is going to be the future media because the old media is the dead media. They're irrelevant. Mm. When people wake up, as they are doing now, they realize that the old media is just lying to them or distracting them or refusing to report the stories that they should be hearing about, like all the heavy metals in your copper pipes, in your lead pipes, in your food, in your children's toys, for example. Yeah. Where's the reporting on that story? You won't see that in the mainstream media, typically. You'll only get it in places like this. Yeah, and much less the, the willingness to discuss natural options that are not approved of by the government, you know, that, that we would ever think that the government would have, you know, the ability to arbitrate and make a decision about what we put into our bodies or how we take things out of our bodies. I mean, it's a, it's a sorry state that we are in. I mean, these are the things I'm not really grateful for, but I acknowledge in my own life, Mike, and you know my story, having suffered through 24 years of chronic illness brought about by government medicine, monopoly medicine, uh, if I had not suffered the way I did, I would not know a fraction of the things I know today to be able to communicate regularly through and being a part of the new media. So suffering is not all bad. I don't wish it upon anybody. But at the same time, I learned a great deal because of the suffering I went through. Yeah, me too. I, I used to be borderline obese, diabetic, chronic pain, extremely uh, difficult mental state. Uh, I went through a lot. And yeah, I got healed just like you got healed and I'm, I'm thankful for that as well. Let me get to the second one on my list. Sure. This is an unusual choice, perhaps, and people might not be expecting this, and I do want to take your calls later on here shortly. But I want to thank my wife. I want to thank my wife and all the wives out there who your wife, Robert, and Alex's wife and Jesse Ventura's wife and all the wives out there 
who understand the, the importance of what we do and support us in our efforts to be yeah. on the front lines and to, to tell the truth, sometimes even at risk to our own safety. Yeah. Uh, because it, it, we cannot do what we do without the support of the women in our households and the women in our communities. And I, I want to give a big shout out to all the, all the women out there who are also patriots, who also support freedom, who, who, who support your husband's fights for freedom and, mm -hmm. and for the future generations of America. Yeah, I will obviously second that or else I'll be in big trouble. For my <laughs> I set you up for that, Robert. No, oh, but she, you know, honestly, it, it is that they, they realize what we're doing and they stand behind us and give us uh, strength and sustenance in so many ways. And, and I'll bless them, love them dearly. And, and even, you know, Carol Paul, who I met, uh, Ron Paul's wife of, uh, what, 50 years or so now, uh, amazing woman standing, by, you know, beside her husband. And, you know, literally he's putting his life at risk by doing what he is doing, the more he gains traction. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, uh, a debt of gratitude that we owe to those women. And, you know, if I add something along that vein, I, I think one of the, the things more recently that I'm very grateful for are the, the Raw Milk Freedom Riders. These are also in the mom wife. Great moms. Yeah. yeah. These moms hey, we're, we're getting ready to go to break, Robert. Sorry to cut you off. But we will be right back in a few minutes with more things to be thankful for, including taking your calls. I promise we'll get it working.